Hello, Priscilla Batzell in Florida, Spring Hill, at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery. In the backyard, still September. Timer set for 20 minutes, well, 19 and some, because the camera will shut off. You will hear thunder. I am out here risking <laughs> whatever it is I risk every time I do this, when I know that the weather's not going to be good. I am so not done playing with submersion pours, so... That's pretty much what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to introduce you to the Amazon omelet turning. It's an OXO omelet turning spatula. Available on my Amazon link. Yeah, I'm easily confused lately. Um, I just try and do too much, you know. I need a staff of ten and I have none. So, anyway. I'm not sure why I'm spreading this around, but I will put a puddle of paint around. The last couple things that I used to do a submersion pour were not a cup with a hole in the bottom to release the pressure. They were, and I'll show you in a moment, something similar to this. Actually, there it is. I used this, which was the half bottle from the dollar store that once upon a time released the paint right down <laughs> under my canvas as I was attempting to pour it. I'm going to use my glasses today because that way I can see what's in the white paint and the difference. That's just a bubble. And that's just a bug. So I can see the difference between white paint and white canvas. I did mention that I was going to put a puddle around the pour spot. I am going to seat, I'm going to attempt something I've never done before, which was to use this top to a soda bottle. I'm not sure if anybody else has done it. I haven't seen them do it, and I haven't done it. So I think what I'm going to do also, I'm going to throw that in the bucket. Throw your paint water in the yard, not in the pipes, by the way. So I'm going to take that. And I have this color that I don't use very often or enough of. And I'm going to create my puddle with it. Hopefully I don't dump anything over. And I got plenty of it. It's actually not a bad color. I just forget to use it often. And let's see. Now black is a catalyst. White is a catalyst. Gold, not so much, but I kind of feel like starting with gold. And so that's what I'm going to do. And what goes better with gold for me than green gold, color shift by Folk Art? Not much. It's funny, you know, I, I have this idea in advance what my colors are going to be, and then at the last moment, every single time, they just... <laughs> they change. Utterly and completely. It's like... It's like somebody's playing with my brain. That's kind of thick. That might need to be have a bottle change. I also have this basting tool that I took most of the bristles out of that I just made an awesome piece with in a very short amount of time, which everybody seems to be very pleased with. It actually accidentally got posted ahead of time. I don't know why I'm putting that in there. It's just that it's sitting in that cup and telling me that it needs to go away. Those are my potato salad restaurant take-home cups and uh, I think I need a splash of red. I think I have plenty of paint in there. I don't know. I might be wrong. <laughs> this is unicorn spit. I just made up my first batch. Unicorn spit is really, really thin. So I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm very interested to find out. I like everything I've got there. I don't see any of the gold because it's in the bottom and that could be problem. I'm going to throw some of my white pearl in there. And uh, I'm going to grab some freezer paper out. I did use my Prussian blue instead of black. And I think I'm going to do that again. Because I've got deco art pouring medium in that. I invested a little bit of money in that. I've got no edge catchers. Wow. No edge catchers and no freezer paper. But I do have ha, I do have a plastic wrapped 8 by 10 20 canvas, excuse me, and uh, hopefully it doesn't rain. And if I have paint to dump off, I will use that. I really can't believe I have no edge catchers. That's it. Oh, I at least found the freezer paper. I can always use that, I guess. Or I don't know if I can use that, but we'll try. So the submersion trick is to allow the paint from whatever. Oh, yeah, that's going to work awesomely, awesomely well. To slowly release, or in this case, not. 
so that we have a much better chance of patterning in cells. And there is no silicone in my paint mix. I don't particularly care for the silicone in my paint mix just because then I have to clean it off the canvas and I don't like that. So this is cool. What's even cooler is that the rain started and then stopped. That's a bubble, yeah. So that's neat, huh? We got 14 minutes-ish left. And I'm never sure how to keep the lacing and tip, but seeming that torching will release cells sometimes, I'm going to try that without overdoing it, because if I overdo it, then I firm up the surface of the paint and it doesn't do what I want it to do anymore, because it's no longer capable of moving. I don't know how I'm going to feel about those colors, but um, it's a patience factor very similar to the uh, patient factor involved in ring pours and, in my case lately, cookie cutters, which I've been enjoying immensely, doing cookie cutter submersions. I've been experimenting with other things other than cookie cutters, trying to make a similar submersion tool out of other objects, and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Most recently, I tried to cut a ring out of a large soda bottle. That did not work. I don't recommend it. So that's cool. And it's very tempting to do some really strange things. But I think if I'm patient, there's a big if right there. <laughs> if I'm capable of being patient, which I'm not, I'm going to try to be patient. I sort of see what I had in there stretching out. You know, someday I'm going to try the Rain-X original formula on one of these submersions and see if it uncovers stuff. I just don't, there's no guarantee you're going to keep your lacy cells without being very, very slow tipping. And that pretty Tiffany blue paint that I poured around to begin with is almost completely disappeared. So the fact that I don't use it a lot isn't really bothering me. I am so tempted to go find an edge catcher, and I know right where they are, but they're all of, you know, four seconds away in the building beside us that you don't see. It's a potting shed. <laughs> I call it my studio, because it's got my stuff in it. <laughs> oh, you know what? I just want to... I want to take a chance. I'm going to let paint roll that way. I'll be right back. doorknob. I have a latch. It doesn't work. It holds a padlock. So that's not really, um, ooh, that is tipping kind of slow. That's neat. I should have just done a bunch of that. I'm loving the colors. It kind of reminds me of some wild alien planet. But I'd like it to spread faster. <laughs> Please spread faster. It's warm out here today. I don't know if that has any bearing on anything. I know. I went and got my edge catcher and then I refused to use it until now that I've seen the, the paint moving, I really like this over here, and I have no idea how I'm going to keep that. I also have, check that out, I have cool stripes, but I also have paint that I can scoop right up. Cool. Ha! With my Princeton Catalyst spatula. And that turned out pretty neat. Not that we'll get to keep it, but sometimes I just need to play. I have a round one of these, and I'm going to use it. So I don't think we're going to make colors. You know what? That's just going to get stuck right there. And I'm going to clean up my spatulas for a moment, pour them in the pan. I wonder what would happen if I just played a little bit. I got colors. Sure. Huh? Sure. I'm getting questions about dinner. The local deli makes good soup. Even if we have stuff planned for dinner. I'm just playing. 
Well, that spreads a little bit just because I can. I don't think I'm going to keep any of that, but I had to know. I had to show you. I could put a lot of colors over there. I'd like to just drag through everything. Here, I'll tell you what. Let's take our experimental colors and see what happens with them. Well, I still have that white paint. So much for the lacing effect, right? I'm just playing. Nobody may ever see this. Or, you know, I could go back to tipping. I just hate to see all those pretty cells go, and I know tipping is the nemesis of pretty cells. But I'm not minding the other stuff that I see. Let's go ahead. You know, I've been kind of a tease and not really. I'm gonna go ahead, stretch those out. Should have grabbed the Rain-X while I was inside. Now when I get it, when I pull the paint like that on the edge, I also tip it back, but I squeeze it over. That way. A couple of things can happen, one of which I lost. I can take the paint right on my edge catcher as soon as I have a little slip slide, and I can use it again wherever I want, which isn't hurting my feelings any, and probably won't stay because it'll just become part of the, the tipped design. I kind of like that over there, and I kind of want that to go down that way. And when I squeeze it back under the canvas, then it also adds something to the pattern. And I like this over here, but I don't want to have to tip it to get it to go over there any further. I could really easily just leave that like it is. I wish I'd kept a little paint. I wish I'd mixed two batches of paint, one to pour in and one to pour after. Because that would have been interesting. I really don't want to lose all those cells. Do I have anything in here I'm willing to sacrifice? That's the question. I know I'm quiet. I'm doing something completely new. I'm going to steal some paint. That's not new. I steal paint all the time. That's kind of really neat. It's not bothering me a bit to steal that paint. And there's the rain. But the rain is lucky for us. So long as there's no lightning. Which is a tall order in Florida because that's pretty much what you get when you get the rain. It's a lightning storm. I'm not sure I really love that white up there which means I could actually add some other color up there if I needed to. Ooh, the sun and the rain, what a surprise. <laughs> Not at all. I'm just gonna keep stealing paint. I don't know if it's a grand piece of art or just a really weird piece of art, but it's can I dip those in there? Yes. Can I pull that color down? Oh, I can. <laughs> now I want, since I've already gone this far, why not go for gusto? Let's take some of that purple. And let's take some of that pearl. And let's know that as long as we're using a little silicone basting brush from the dollar store or Walmart or wherever you get yours that we can add colors and still make them look like they're part of the cohesive design which is pretty cool right about now I want a little bit up there I love it marbles it it's it's a great little mixing tool I was told about this by by one of my fans and I'm gonna have to look him up 
and tell him thank you. Because I don't, I was planning on doing it, honestly, but um, he really encouraged that to happen. And I'm really liking what's going on. And I think we're almost done. Why not be different? Yes. Different is good. <laughs> good thing, too, because I'm pretty different. Okay. Well. Wow. Um. It's sort of the same difference of the fork, only it's floppy. So. I'm not sure that was right. But it. At any given point in time, you can just decide to go ahead and add a new color right on your canvas. I'm throwing that in the bucket. <laughs> I'm gonna torch. Maybe I'll do a, one of these with Rain-X next time since it works so well. We torch. We torch to get rid of air bubbles in the paint. We torch to release patterns in the paint because there's pouring medium there. The recipe for my mixed paint is below the video in the description. I think I call it my pouring mixture or my recipe or some variation on that theme. I may have to go after the video and touch up the edges with some white wet paint, but I'll just use my little uh, silicone basting brush and fix it up. So if you like what I do and you love the fact that I post a video every day and I like to experiment and share my share my resources with you, um, please feel free to contribute if you can. I have Patreon and PayPal links both under the video in the description and as icons on my YouTube header. What is that in there? It needs to come out. I don't want schmutz in there. Thank you. So, this is cool. You can see Pinterest links and Instagram link and a link to a Facebook album at the bottom underneath the uh, description that will lead you to the YouTube artworks and they will be priced with dates and you should be able to have no problem finding them. I'm thinking about changing that up and uh, just making it more than one album because there's like too many entries in there with the wet and dry artworks. I don't know what else I've forgotten. I'm sure there's something but um, that was a ball. I want to say thank you to all my contributors who've kept me painting. I really really appreciate your help and you have kept me painting. Um, this is cool. I just like it. I'm going to do it again, too, <laughs> right after I fix my sides. And we will try one of these with Rainix just because we can. Um, thank you for all your comments and your kind and generous natures, and I appreciate your, uh, your attendance and your subscriptions, and uh, feel free to join me in the next video if you would so desire. This is Priscilla Batzel in Spring Hill, Florida, at Expressionist Art Studio in the backyard with something cold around her neck because it's just too hot for smart people to be outside without something. Um, <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. See you soon. Bye for now.